It's preventative maintenance time. Original power steering pump went out a couple years ago, so I swapped that. I did not swap the lines, but as you can see, those are very overdue. Not really leaking yet, just see a little bit of dampness around where the lines turn the corner to go under the engine and transmission. But I'd really prefer that high pressure line not let go while I'm driving and spray atomized fluid all over my engine bay. Gonna get the ECU vent hose out of the way, so I got a bit more room to work with over here. Like that. Gonna use a catch bottle, a funnel, and a turkey baster to get the old fluid out of the reservoir. Good idea to put a bib on it just in case any drips. Fluid is full to the cold line. Reservoir is just about empty. Fluid doesn't look too bad. Slightly dark depending on the lighting, but still plenty red, not brown. System claims to hold 0.85 liters. This is a one and a half liter bottle, and I've not even taken out half a liter yet. Can lift the car up into the air until the front wheels are off the ground, then cycle the rack lock to lock to eject further fluid. And give it the wiggle test. Make sure nothing's gonna tip. Reservoir is just about empty with a tiny bit of fluid at the very bottom. Gonna manually cycle the wheel. Full Full left. Full right. Little more fluid, not a whole lot. I'll take what I can get. Not perfect but there's a little bit more old fluid out. The steering rack lives on top of the rearmost part of the front subframe. There's the supply and return lines. The lines hop over the subframe member, are held by a clamp there. Then they pass under the transmission and oil pan to another clamp here, which has been patched with zip ties and bits of hose as anti-chafing. From there, they take a 90 degree turn towards the right side of the vehicle, go over a ways, then up the front of the engine to the pump. Can see the corrosion a little bit better from down here. That's why I want to swap these lines. This is one of those fun parts where it's almost impossible to get to my face, the camera, and the light all in the right position at the same time. I have a 16 millimeter crow foot wrench on the upper high pressure supply line. To my great surprise, I'm actually getting this thing to turn a little bit. Switch to my phone, the camcorder is a little bit too bulky to maneuver down here under the car. That nut is turning, I'll just have to work it off a fraction of a turn at a time so I don't bind up on any of the other lines or anything else in the way. Painstaking process, but I'm getting there slowly. Gonna take this chance to hit it with a wire brush and some brake cleaner, knock some of that grit off so it can't get inside the system. Got it cleaned up and fingered tight. Anytime now, this is going to start dripping. Got my catch pan at the ready. I stand corrected, got the lock nut off, the o-ring is still in the bore and sealing. Going to have to loosen the entire hose assembly in order for that to come off. T25 Torx for the line retainer. And cutting the zip ties, holding them to the forward bracket. If you're enjoying my nonsense, consider doing that thing down below with the like and subscribe button. For good measure, remove the 12 millimeter bolt and the forward line retainer, just so I have a little bit more room to move them. And with an extra bit of wiggle, the O-ring pops out of the steering rack and the fluid drains out of the high pressure line. Almost identical configuration up top, except for a longer nut for better access around the pump and its bracket. This should likewise pop right off. Small amount of dribble from the pump. Most everything else should have drained by now. One more retainer up here, holding the lines together, buried in the corrosion. I think that's the T25. Let's see if I can get it off. Getting this last clamp off the lines was a protracted battle. That took the longest out of any of the steps so far. I'm filthy, the head on this is almost stripped, and I'm not going to use it again. I'll find another solution. Pulled out the dipstick and dipstick tube, and unhooked the connector for my oil pressure sensor. I believe the stock oil pressure switch is a little bit lower profile, so that step may not be needed. 
worked the high pressure line under the upper radiator hose and above the upper oil cooler hose. A little bit of a tight fit. It will work out just a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. For more maneuvering room over here, I'm going to pull the lower transmission torque mount to 18 millimeter nuts up at the subframe and two 14 millimeter bolts into the transmission housing. Torque mount out of the way gives a whole lot more room for the lines to move. Working the flexible part of the line down out of the front of the engine compartment to allow me to have more angles I can twist it to to get it clear of the rack. Putting this under jobs that are easier with a lift. There's not quite enough height to maneuver this in the way that I want. Repositioned the jack stands. A little bit less room to maneuver down there, but a few inches more height and that's what I need. That little bit of height was all I needed. One crusty, rusty Dr. Seuss power steering supply line removed from the car. There's the new one and it passes the overall dimensions and shape sanity test. The low pressure return line would be next on the list to battle if I were doing a regular like for like swap. Instead, I'm going to be fabricating the rest of the return line and adding a cooler. Got a spool of aluminum tubing, magnifying filter, Raley power steering cooler kit. This is part number 13200. Some extra hose for good measure and some new clamps. Also, a bender for the tubing so I can make nice sharp bends without kinking it. Cleaned up section here. That's where I'm going to make my cut. This compact tubing cutter is great for tight spots. It is meant for aluminum and copper. It will go through steel as well. Just needs a little bit more patience. Good cut. Just took a few minutes of patience. Can let that drain, then take it down without making a huge mess. Hose fully disconnected. While that finishes draining, I'll get the front splash guard out of the way. 10 millimeter bolt on either side. Just in front of the subframe, there's a set of tabs that engage with the radiator assembly. Push those forward. And the whole thing will drop down right on top of your face. Ow. Hose clamp attaches return line to the reservoir. This is an original clamp, so it's a seven millimeter. Oh, that's overdue. Look how badly crushed that hose is. And it was still weeping. Not particularly tight there. Already got it rocking back and forth. Got rags underneath just so it doesn't drool all over the alternator. And should just be able to walk it off the barb. And since I've cut it beneath, it just wants to essentially fall out of the engine bay, which I can let it do. Yoink. Going to use a short section of the flex hose to connect the old return line to the new aluminum return line. Going to follow about the same path, just behind the subframe, right about to here. It's going to hop over the subframe, sneak around the radiator, and the cooler is going to mount down low somewhere up in here. Return line will exit the cooler, come back around, and then go up and join the reservoir. Putting a partial flare on the aluminum to stop the tube from backing off. Took a little extra prep to prepare the old return line to accept the new flex hose. Slightly chamfered the edge so the hose slides over without cutting. And then I carved a couple little grooves into it so it has some bite on the hose to reduce the chance of the hose simply popping off. Not much pressure, but I'm not taking that risk. Pull this out collected any dust, and try to put it together. Warming the hose with the heat gun makes a world of difference, as does putting a little bit of transmission fluid on the hard line so it slides over easy. And when I said easy, I meant with moderate to severe struggle. This pipe is 11 millimeters in change, so bigger than 3 eighths, smaller than half, so had to fight it a bit. Still double clamping it, just to make sure that joint does not blow open, even though it's stiff enough that it could probably stay together even without the clamps. Good idea to unhook the battery negative. The steering pipes go right past the starter. That's the kind of excitement you really don't want to have. Planning out where I want the cooler to go. Front bumper support has a few holes. One already has a bolt and a bracket for the transmission cooler. There's a matching hole right over here that I could use to support the far end of the steering cooler. So that could live somewhere like that. A little bit of a test fit. 
hardware looks like it's going to work from this angle. Thanks from that bolt there. And the new bolt I just added. We'll have to adjust the position of this horn and trim the pipe a little bit, but should be able to make that work. Got my inspection mirror up in here, making sure there's no bits of the old o-ring or any debris inside the port for the high pressure line. Gonna give that a wipe down for a good measure, Can maybe get the new line in. The new hose did not come with any sort of protection for the ends. Got them taped up and with some rags to protect the threads, the o-rings, and everything else from getting torn up or dirty. As much as we like to clown on, assembly is the reverse of disassembly. Yeah, that holds true with all of its pitfalls, such as getting the end here around the steering column to where it bolts up into the rack. Actually, it was a bit easier to get it back in than taking the old one out. Just need to pull my little protective wrap off and get it started. Press the line. Looks like it's going to fit. After a fair bit of fiddling around, Got the o-ring in, and got the thread started by hand. Run this down as far as I can, that'll ensure it's not cross-threaded. Upper end of the pressure hose, connected up. Still needs a little bit of arranging. So far so good. Put a quick hit of paint on the hardware, preventing rust, and making it blend in a little bit easier once it's behind the grill. Still fine-tuning the positioning, but it's fairly level. Slightly behind the bumper, going to get plenty of airflow regardless. For the aluminum lines, doing a partial flare and then smoothing the outer edge so it doesn't tear up the tube. Still need slight adjustments, maybe some trimming of the front splash guard. Especially over here where the lines are going to be. A lot of stuff going on in this engine bay. Filter is small, but just big enough that there's not a whole lot of places it can fit easily. Thinking to nestle it up here right behind the headlight. Run a hard line up. Follow the liquid line for the AC, because it's coming up right from that area. Up around, transition to the flex, into the filter, flex out, around to the reservoir. Alright, got it hooked up. There's your turn line from the reservoir. Magnifying filter tucked in there right behind the headlight. Loops around just ahead of the washer filler neck and the ECU enclosure to the hard line. Attach the AC line, roughly following it down. On the other side of that, follows the AC line around. Put a flex into the cooler. Bottom of the cooler and the first hard line I bent up earlier which goes all the way back here joins up with the supply line and to my splice funnels in the reservoir almost full bottle of Valvoline Max Life time to see if the system is going to hold fluid the idea is pretty simple I'm going to intentionally overfill the reservoir by a little bit because I know there's a bunch of air in here and it's going to take a little while to bleed it all out comment section is freely available. Whether you have questions, advice, or just want to say that I'm an idiot and doing everything wrong without meaningfully backing up your claims. That took half a liter, and yep, that is above the hot full line, but there is still some room in there, so if it foams up, it's not going to immediately try to puke out. Got the lower torque mount back on. Tubes are secured. Rear power steering line clamp is on, so the tubes aren't going to rattle around. Horn's still not connected yet. Splash tray is going to wait until I make sure there's no leaks. Three, two, one. Three, four, five, six. A few seconds run. And make sure nothing's peeing fluid. No leaks over there. Don't see anything dripping underneath. That is a very good sign to start with. Immediately see that the level dropped. Let's see what the dipstick says. Yeah, that dropped it from way at the bottom of the spring here, all the way down to actually right on the money for cold fill line. 
Next, I gotta carefully cycle the rack a few times. And... Yeah, those are very, very angry noises coming from this pump. Oh, and look at that. I just barely touched the steering wheel and the reservoir is empty. Yeah, that makes sense. The bottle is empty enough. I should be able to free pour without the funnel. It ate basically everything was left in the bottle. I'm going to give this thing a minute or two to settle. Let some of those micro bubbles work their way out of suspension. And then we'll do that a few more times until it stops screaming at me. Yum, strawberry milkshake. And again. That right there is why you double check for leaks. Same clamp as the rest of them, but that joint in particular does not want to play nice. Probably gonna have to replace that spring clamp with the screw clamp to get a little bit more tension. Leak secured, got the splash tray back on, had to nip a little bit of the corner there and over there for fitment. Not a whole lot. Everything goes back together. Wow, that doesn't sound like death anymore. Still not great though. Still got some air in there. Got everything back together, fought off that cold, put about just shy of 60 miles on the car since the repair. No leaks, no more air in the system. And I got one finger power steering, though this car has always had a little bit of a heavy steering wheel compared to Shoyun's Corolla or the F-150 I used to drive for work. Still got a little bit of complaining noise from the pump while at a stop, but it's been doing that since I put this new pump in. And it's certainly much better than the old one. And just peek through the grill down here to see a bit of the cooler. And you can see the sharp drop in temperature when the cooling fan kicks in. A little bit of a warm day. Not as warm as the worst case in some areas I'll drive in, but warm enough for a test of the cooling systems. Taking a look at the power steering. How warm is this after a winding mountain road? 91. Not bad at all. It would almost get that hot before just cruising around town on a mild day. I'm gonna call that a successful test of the power steering cooler. Short of finding some place where it gets much, much hotter than this, this is about the worst case scenario the system's gonna see. Slow speed, back to back, hairpin turns, climbing a mountain on a warm day, and it only got as warm as it would get just doodling around town on a mild day before I added the cooler. I wasn't so worried about the synthetic fluid, but the pump and the rack are gonna be a lot happier running probably 50 Celsius cooler under extreme conditions than they did before. With the new high pressure line and replacing the rubber parts of the return line and adding the filter, this system's gonna be good to go for quite a while longer. If you enjoyed this and wanna see some more garage shenanigans, here's something that YouTube thinks you'll like. Until next time.